Hey guys, my name is Eddie Joe. I'm a critical care medicine physician. Today is Friday, October 19th, 2018. And I'm gonna be doing a talk today about plasma light. Don't ask me why I have an empty bag. I'm weird like that. I've made two videos already. Uh, one about saline solution, 0.9% sodium chloride, and one about LR that you can check out. There'll be possibly some pop-ups here and there that you can check out, but these, this basically concludes my three big uh, fluid bolus bag type talks. Anyway, nevertheless, um, thank you very much for clicking on my video. If you learned anything whatsoever in my video, please click the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And um, yeah, that's, let's, let's get started. So have you ever heard of plasma light? I mean, before I did my fellowship, I hadn't heard of it. This was a completely new fluid to me. I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's called plasma light. This fluid has actually been around since the 1980s, to the best of my knowledge. I'm not making any money whatsoever off of this, by the way. It's made by Baxter, the same company that makes the LR as well as the saline in the United States. So, um, yeah. I actually emailed Baxter a couple of years ago when I was starting to do my research on plasma light to figure out if, um, you know, what was the backstory, who invented it, etc. Because we know who invented that uh, Thomas Lada invented saline and so on and so forth. Hartman invented Hartman. Um, and Sidney Ringer inv invented Ringer. Anyway, um, but they, they basically did not get back to me. So let's start off by talking a little bit about this. Going through, one thing I do recommend is that you always look at what you give patients to know what's in it. And so you basically see that amongst the, amongst the ingredients or the concentrations of this particular fluid, you find that the sodium concentration is 140. What's the sodium concentration normally? What should it be in plasma? 140. What's the, what's the sodium concentration in saline? 154. What's the sodium concentration in LR? 130. <clears throat> Excuse me. Plasma light? 140. Smack right in the middle. Okay, the most physiologic. Now, you will see that the chloride concentration is 98 milliequivalents per liter. In saline, it's 154 milliequivalents per liter because it's a one to one ratio with the sodium, sodium chloride. Duh. So, 154 milliequivalents of chloride in saline, 109 milliequivalents per liter of chloride in lactator ringers, and <clears throat> excuse me, in plasma light, it's 98 milliequivalents per liter, okay, of chloride. Why is this important? Well, there is substantial data to show that hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis is bad for you. I mentioned this in my IV fluid talk. I give the citations for all this data in my IV fluid talk. As a matter of fact, there's two studies that were published, I believe on March 1st of 2018, the New England Journal of Medicine, which I will cite down below in the description box, that show how hyperchloremic metabolic acidosis is deleterious to the kidneys, okay? And that's the SMART trial and the, and the SALT ED trial that were both published in Vanderbilt. Thank you guys in Vanderbilt for all your hard work for actually coming up with that study. It's a good study. I like it a lot. Thanks. Now, continuing down the ingredients list here, I already talked about the sodium. I talked about the potassium. Potassium. Now let's talk about the magnesium. There's no other IV fluid that has magnesium in it. And you might say to yourself, why does this have magnesium in it? Well, I don't know. But there is some data, and I will link it below, that says that if you give patients plasma light, then you're gonna have to give them less magnesium replacement. And magnesium replacement costs money, okay? Because in the ICU, we wanna keep everybody as euboxic as humanly possible. I know that I like to keep my mags and, you know, you practice medicine the way you want to, don't trust me. Anyway, that's, that should be enough of a, of a disclaimer. But I like to keep my mag above too. So every single day in my practice, I check a mag level on patients, especially those who I'm diuresing or resuscitating. And if this allows me to give less magnesium replacement, then hey, I'm gonna go ahead and use it, okay? Now, continuing on with the ingredients list, 
This has five milliliter equivalents per liter of potassium. You may say to yourself, well, if this has potassium, am I going to use it on a patient who is hyperkalemic? And I will leave that up to you as to whether you want to use it or not, but I do, under certain clinical circumstances, provide this. Why? Because the pH of this fluid, or well, the pH that's listed on it, is 7.4. If you really think about it, it's not actually 7.4. There's something called a strong ion difference, uh, Stewart's equation. And I definitely recommend, I'm going to link below uh, a particular website that explains this a lot better than I do. But nevertheless, um, the potassium being five in this, in a patient, in a, excuse me, in an IV fluid that's not acidic is not going to cause the shift from the intracellular space to the extracellular space that you do see in normal acidosis. Think about it. Saline, which has a strong ion difference of zero, or if you want to go by the number in the bag, a pH of five to 5.5 creates more of an acidosis than this does. So you give a patient who's acidotic saline, and there's going to be a shift of potassium from the intracellular space to extracellular space, in other words, the bloodstream, and that's going to cause more hyperkalemia than this. There are also some very good examples that are, that are mentioned by Dr. Josh Farkas, who uh, is one of the writers for pomcrit.org. The guy does a phenomenal job. If you don't listen to, if you don't follow that guy on Twitter, and if you don't um, read that guy's blog on a weekly basis, you're missing out on a lot of good, good data. So please check out his information. I know I do on a very regular basis, okay? So, he makes some great examples about how plasma light does not actually cause hyperkalemia. So go check that out. I recommend it. Also, continuing down, you're going to see that as a buffer, this has acetate. Why is a buffer important? Well, buffers help your body make bicarb out of other substances. That's possibly oversimplifying it, but this is not the most advanced video you're going to watch on this. There is a guy who has a website called www.derangedphysiology.com and if you're a medical student or a resident or even an attending, nursing student, etc. I definitely recommend you check this out because this guy whose first name is Alex, I'm not going to try to mention his last name, has a great, great way of explaining all things physiology and amongst that he describes how, for example, acetate, lactate and gluconate, gluconate is also in this particular fluid, how these particular uh, elements or molecules or whatever they are, how they get turned into bicarb. So acetate has an advantage over lactate, you know, sodium lactate and lactated ringers, that it gets metabolized in all the, well, most tissues in the body versus lactate and lactated ringers gets metabolized and I've seen anywhere from 70 to 85% in the liver and the rest of the percent in the kidneys. So if somebody has fulminant, hepatic and uh, renal failure, then those patients aren't going to do well with the sodium lactate versus sodium acetate that gets metabolized in most tissues. So, and usually within 15 minutes is at least the data that I've seen regarding it. That will be beneficial for these patients who are acidotic to create more bicarb uh, endogenously. Okay, the other buffer that I can't quite get the explanation as to why it's in there is gluconate. Uh, gluconate is a theoretical buffer that's supposed to turn gluconate ob obviously into into bicarb. However, the exact mechanism by which this happens, to my understanding, is not known. If you know how it gets turned into bicarb, please let me know, correct me. I don't pretend to know absolutely everything. But in addition, there is some concern about it not actually being a buffer in the human body. There's also some concern that it increases urinary output and might falsely reassure clinicians that the patient is making good urine. Um, those, those types of things. So that's what I wanted to say about that. All in all, this is plasma light. Your institution may not have it. Some people may say, hey, this is a new fluid. No, it's not. It's been around for a long time. Okay, we finally got it at my institution and I'm happy about it. Um, 
what else do I want to say about it? Um, if you have any other questions about this, please let me know. I will link all the citations to all the junk I'm basically talking in the description box below. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you learned anything whatsoever, please give me a like, a thumbs up. Thanks very much for you know following me along on this journey. I appreciate you. Have a great day. Bye.